new uh, iteration status page is that uh, here we can take a look at, at a board. Uh, the teams can stand around this, this uh, iteration tracking board on a daily basis. They can look at the, the flow of cards um, throughout the sprint. Uh, they can dive deep if they want on, on discussion comments or tasks. Um, so this is, this is a great visual for teams to use to, to look at, at a daily, on a daily basis during their stand-up and, and see how things are progressing. Uh, on the right-hand side here, we have our iteration progress app. And this is showing a, a burn up of points on a daily basis. And if we switch over, if this is working. Well, anyway, it doesn't look like it's loading at the moment. But um, you can switch to, to different sorts of charts that, that help the team during their sprint. Uh, and also, we can get a, a summary view of how this, the sprint is progressing. So this is actually a, a view into one of Rally's teams. Uh, they have two days remaining in their current sprint. Uh, they are actually, they have 85, they've accepted 85% of the total points they committed to, um, and they've got about two days left, so hopefully, hopefully they'll finish on time. I'm going to relo reload this page momentarily. So in addition to the card view, uh, we also can show a grid of items. Um, for the, cur the current sprint. So I personally prefer this view. Um, I love looking at the board during the daily stand-up with the entire team, but I like looking at the grid because it gives a little bit more detail as to, as to what stories we're working on, their tasks, et cetera. And so if I wanted to get more information about the task for a particular story, I can look at the task status column here. Uh, I just click on this icon to load the tasks. Maybe, maybe not. All right, it seems like my internet access is not working great at the moment. So um, anyway, I could drill down into, into more details for each story that the team is working on during the sprint. Uh, so this, is, this isn't released yet. Um, it will release within the next month. Um, but this is a new version of the iteration status page, so if you're already using Rally, this is going to be a great view for your teams to use on a daily basis. And I'll switch over to one of our other products, FlowDoc. Uh, so this is something we're, we're very excited about. Um, FlowDoc is essentially a team chat and team inbox. Uh, so on the right-hand side here, this is actually an area for a team to chat about items that they're working on. Um, just basically hold discussions on a daily basis, anything to do related to do or related with the work uh, that they're doing. Well, on the left-hand side, we can set up a whole bunch of different feeds to feed information into our inbox. So this could be emails, uh, it could be Twitter feeds, uh, it could be details about builds or, or production, etc. Um, So if I take a look, I've, I've, I'm look, currently looking at the deploy tags. I'm looking at all the different deployments that, that our team, our FlowDoc team in Helsinki is doing currently. Um, we can drill down into each one. And for some reason, this is not working. Okay. Um, so so the, the FlowDoc app is great is because it gives the teams a central place to communicate. So all of their communication, everything is happening in one location. Uh, they can just log into FlowDoc. They don't have to monitor email constantly. Uh, they get all their information right here in this, in this one application. FlowDoc has some great apps uh, for uh, some great mobile apps as well. Um, so you can keep up with, with team activities on your phone. Yes, there is. So, so there's a number of integrations um, with Rally and, and other tools. And so you can just set up the Rally integration. Um, you can talk about and reference items from within Rally in FlowDoc, provide links to them, et cetera. And another thing I'd like to highlight is the, the, ability, the configurability of Rally. And so using our dashboards and our, our custom apps, uh, we, can, we could set up Rally to support pretty much whatever framework you're using. Um, so the teams could use Scrum or Kanban. Um, at the organizational level, we could support things like, like SAFE or the Scaled Agile framework. Uh, and so I'm going to demo a workspace we have here. Give me one moment. 
moment. Okay, so we set up an instance of Rally to, to be modeled after the scaled Agile framework. As you can see here, we have the online store Inc. as our, our master project. And below that, we have a number of uh, Agile release trains. So the consumer program and the reseller program. And the view I'm showing you currently is actually a, a portfolio Kanban board. Uh, it's focused on epics. So this is, this is a view that the, the great organization is going to look at to determine the, the status of work across all the teams, potentially across multiple Agile release trains at the same time. And so we can see here, uh, we have items that are currently in the idea stage. Um, some are currently building business cases. Others are being prioritized. And then some others are being built. And for those, those items, those epics that are currently being built, we can actually get a view into the, the overall progress for those specific items. I have absolutely no idea what's going on here. But anyway. Um, so we can, we can get a, a, we could dive deeper if we wanted to in each of these items as they're being built, um, once they've been planned into our, our PSIs, and see how the overall progress is going, even from the upper levels of the organization. Sorry, I'm going to switch browsers real quick. OK, this seems to be working better. OK, so another, another view you might use uh, if you're following safe is a release train, re release train planning board. So this is a great example of another view you can set up in Rally um, to help you plan your release train. So what we're looking here on the right-hand side is our iteration planning board. So we could see multiple iterations for the, the release train uh, for the upcoming PSI. Uh, we, can, we can drag and drop items into to different sprints, create a blueprint for the PSI. Uh, we can look at the, the, the features that we've committed on the left-hand side uh, and the, the stories beneath them. You can see the overall vision or theme for the PSI in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, and so we can very quickly and easy easily plan our PSI right here on this, this one page. Uh, if you like to do weighted shortest job first calculations, we have an app for that as well. Um, here in the WSJF backlog, uh, we can see all of our features. We can enter values in here for the time value, uh, user value, job size, and then develop the overall score, et cetera. And so if we change any of these values, we can see that the, the score is updated on the right-hand side. And so um, the, the score is something that's, that's a custom field that's added to feature. Um, and through this app, we can, we can update it directly. And this will provide the calculations for you. What's that? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. The score? Yeah, so if you're using a weighted shortest job first, um, the score is the weighted score um, for that particular item based on all these different factors. And so in this particular case, um, this, this score is based on this calculation here at the top. So uh, it's user value, time value, plus risk reduction or opportunity enablement um, divided by the job size, which is, this, which is essentially the size uh, of that particular item. What's that? It's the lowest. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so, so the method they use is, is the same uh, modified Fibonacci sequence to determine the job size. Um, so it's not exactly story points because these aren't stories. Uh, but the, but they, say, they use the same scale. And, and so the score is, is based using that same, score, that same scale, but they're not actually story points because these aren't actually stories. Yeah, so, so features are typically managed at the program level. Um, so product managers, et cetera. Um, they're certainly going to take input from team members to, to figure out the job size. Um, but is these, at this level, we typically don't need the entire team to estimate something because it really hasn't reached them yet. Right? So, so the teams typically consume stories. They will take on features which will then be broken down into stories. But at this level, um, we'll have involvement from team members to, to create the job size. Um, but it, but most likely won't have been estimated by the entire team yet. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Sure. Yep, absolutely. So every, every single iteration, um, when you're performing planning, um, on the iteration planning board, for, so for each iteration for each team, uh, you can set their velocity. And so here at the top, if you look, uh, this is the team's velocity. For, so for iteration six, um, for PSI uh, Q3 2013, um, their velocity, their estimated velocity is 14 points, and they currently have 16 points worth of work scheduled. And so for each iteration, we can see whether or not it's overloaded. Um, and then at an individual level, each team member is going to determine their capacity for each iteration as well. So we can make sure that individual team members aren't, aren't overloaded. It, it won't prevent you from doing so. Uh, but it will warn you that, that you are overloaded. Yes, so it, it has an indicator. Um, and the same goes for the Kanban board. So if we, we look at the team Kanban board, uh, if we go over our WIP limits for any particular stage, it's going to notify you that we indeed have, have gone over our WIP for that particular stage. So it's 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 not a hard it's not a hard line. It, it's not it, it will allow you to pull something else in, but it's it's going to make it very visible that you shouldn't. What other, what other questions do you have? There's not currently. No, you, you mark, you mark uh, work days, um, and that's going to drive all the, the capturing of metrics. So, for example, if you uh, mark Saturday or Sunday as, as not being work days, then we're not going to ca capture metrics for those days. But uh, currently, there's no way to actually mark a holiday. Um, usually, just as part of planning, we, dis we discuss those and adjust accordingly. What other questions? Yes. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, if you look at any of the dashboards in Rally, there's actually a blocked work application. And it obeys the scoping here. So if we're looking at a single team, it's going to be only the blocked items for uh, one particular team. 
if we move up the hierarchy, so, so we're looking across multiple teams at the same time, um, and then it, it, would, it would show all the blocked items. And so uh, you could do this in a number of different ways. There's actually an existing blocked work app that we can add to the dashboard. Um, or I could very easily create a custom grid to get a little more control over the, the blocked items and, and what information I'd like to see. That took 10 seconds to create a, a blocked work app. And, and what's great about this is it, it obeys the, the overall scope. So if we're looking at a, a single team, um, we could just see the blocked items for one team, or we could look at all of the blocked items across the entire organization. What other questions? Yes. Sorry, can you hear that? Yeah, so it, 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 they won't reach the top. Um, but this burn up chart here, you can see that we've added the, the total scope line. Um, so the goal here would be for those green bars to, to meet that black line by the end of the sprint. Um, yeah, so, so it, it should touch on, on, the, on the last day of the iteration. It should meet that. If you meet it a day early, that's great. Uh, maybe you can pull in some more work and, and go and increase it the following day. Uh, that's the end of the time box. So um, if you guys have any more questions, uh, our booth is just outside the ballroom. Feel free to stop by. We'll go give you a more in-depth demo uh, if you'd like.